You've probably heard about precision medicine. If you haven't, you at least, I'm sure, have seen huge billboards about different hospitals all over here in New York City, I'm sure, all over the cities you're at, that are promising to sequence your genome, treat your cancer, predict your risk of Alzheimer's disease. So how do we actually make this a reality? To really be able to do that, we need to take complex human diseases and disorders and be able to map them specifically into the three billion letter long sequence of the human genome. So here I have an example of autism and hypertension, but this is true for diabetes, for cancer, for Alzheimer's, pretty much the vast majority of diseases you would think about. The problem is we don't actually know the specific mutations in that bulk of the human genome here printed in the many binders labeled by chromosomes. We don't know which changes in that book are actually the ones that will hugely increase your risk of Alzheimer's or predispose a child to autism or mean that you will or will not respond to specific blood pressure medication. This is one of those books open, so it's a very small part of this three billion letter long sequence with no punctuations, no words, no sense exactly of what anything means. We know some things about the genome. We know where the genes are, here shown in blue. We know some regulatory signals, here shown in green. For the vast majority of the letters in the genome, if you tell me that one of you has a T, the other one has an A, it's a four-letter alphabet, so not very far to go, there is very little that we as a community can actually tell you that would mean. And this is critical, because some of those changes will be completely non-functional. They will mean nothing. You could have a T, I could have an A, and that will make no difference to your health, to our disease status, to our drug response. Others might be very important and functional, but completely benign. For example, maybe that's what means that I have curly hair and some of you have straight hair. Others might actually mean that you have a hugely increased risk of Alzheimer's disease, or you might or might not respond to a specific diabetes medication. So how can we, as computer scientists, start to address this challenge? Seems like this is simple. We just sequence lots of people. We'll look for every person that has a T in that location, see if they get Alzheimer's. Look at every person that has A in that location, see if they get Alzheimer's. And then we look at healthy people and diseased people, and we just look at statistics. Unfortunately, that doesn't work, especially once you go outside of genes. And the problem is that all these individuals might have the same disease, but it's very different mutations that will underlie this disease. And this is especially true for regulatory mutations outside of the gene regions. And that accounts for the vast majority of the genome, far beyond 98% of that 3 billion letters is what used to be called junk DNA. For a long time now, we've known this is not junk. This is the sequences that largely encode how genes are turned on and off. So that's the regulatory part of the genome, the regulatory circuitry. And in that space, there's so much search space that nature has been able to come up with many different ways to have these mutations. And it selects against specifically the sort of mutations that we want to study, the ones that are likely to cause disease. So even if we sequence every person on Earth and have lots of information about their clinical status and disease risk, we still wouldn't have enough data to be able to do this association. So instead, we turn to deep learning models and try to learn along the genome. So looking along the three billion letter long sequence at the many examples of specific biochemical signals that underlie this regulatory capacity to turn genes on and off. This regulatory model, DeepC, then is able to predict for any change like that C shown in red, a change from A to C in that location, specific biochemical consequences that are then causing a gene to be potentially not expressed when it should have been. So for example, in the example case, an A in a healthy individual would mean that a special protein called transcription factor will bind the DNA and give it a signal to turn on a specific gene, let's say a neuronal developmental protein that's really important for early neural development, whereas an individual with a disease in just that single letter change to a C is going to no longer allow the transcription factor to bind, and thus that particular protein won't be turned on and is not going to act when it needs to in early development, potentially predisposing that child to autism.